Why are we here? Life is not about you and me. Life is about helping others. So I'm planning on doing something radical with my life before I leave here. So when I go up there and see the Creator, He'll say, you lived a good life and you tried to market some degree of decency to the people. I think that's what we all should do, is go out there and have a great life and make a lot of money. But more importantly, like George Herbert Walker Bush did and like Barbara Bush did, we should make a difference. In 1983, I was doing television commercials, and I was searching for a punchline after about three hours, I didn't have one. I had the day's receipts in my pocket, so I was desperate. I reached in my pocket, pulled the money out, and said, gallery furniture will save you money. And I've stuck with that line ever since. Gallery furniture will save you money. Save you money. Save you money. Save you money. Now, that's the chip off the old mattress. You got that right. Six my go. When Linda and I came to Houston some 12 years ago, nobody asked us how much money we had. Nobody asked us what our background was or what my educational level was. All the free enterprise system in this great city said to me and Linda was, kid, here's a chance for you. A chance to succeed, a chance to fail. It's totally up to you. How bad do you want to do it? If it is to be, it is up to me. Find a job you love to do. You'll never have to work a day in your life. Find your passion. Put your footprints into the sands of your passion. I think one of the things that a lot of the citizens in this country miss is the joy of work. Work is life's greatest therapy. Well, the Texas entrepreneur who with $5,000 turned his company into a $50 million a year enterprise is bankrolling Norris's new movie, Sidekicks. The two first hooked up at a fundraiser for Norris's Kick Drugs Foundation. We need people willing to take a stance and kick drugs out. That's not bad, man. Hit a little higher, though. There we go. This is George Bush. In recent days, President Clinton and I have been asked to head a nationwide effort uh, to encourage all Americans to give in order to assist those affected by the devastating tsunami in Southeast Asia. With the help of Jim and Linda McIndale, we were created the Bush Clinton Fund. Houston's Mattress Mac, you know him, he brings a king-size secret to the forefront. It happened yesterday on the Oprah Winfrey Show. Jim McAvale is also a huge Elvis fan. He went to a recent auction featuring Elvis memorabilia, and look what he bought. He showed off all the stuff he bought on Oprah. $450,000 worth of goodies, including that 40-pound cape, a belt, and a Lincoln Continental. When I opened that furniture store uh, for Hurricane Harvey, I became an instant national celebrity. Like that was something special to do. What's special about it? You open the door, people are drowning. These are my people. You let them in, for God's sakes. What's special about it? But that's where we've gotten in this society. We're not risk takers. We need to be risk takers for good. So my earliest recollection is when I grew up in... Uh, Mississippi with my uh, parents and my older brother till I was about uh, five years old and my sister uh, Julia and Mary. And then we moved to Dallas, I think when I was five or six years old. Went to uh, Catholic school for eight years for primary school, Catholic high school for uh, four years. Uh, during my, the uh, early years uh, of my life, the first uh, 18 years, I lived in a room with uh, twin beds. Uh, harking back to the furniture business. Twin beds with my brother George. My brother George was my uh, roommate, soulmate for 18 years. And we lived there. We lived, uh, my father was uh, in the insurance business. He was a uh, great salesman and an entrepreneur. And uh, well, he worked very hard. He worked very hard to uh, help his family and his children and his church and the community. That was what he was all about. And, my parents both embodied from day one the fact that the essence of living is giving. We went to church every Sunday. That was uh, mandatory. There was no way to uh, get around that. That was who we are. That was what we were. And it was a great foundational theory there in my life. Not only getting morals from my parents and uh, how to act from my parents, but also from the priest at church every Sunday and the 
Catholic school that I went to. And then uh, seventh and eighth grade, I started playing football. I was pretty good at that. Uh, I'll never forget when I was in the uh, seventh grade, I was at, in late November, the football banquet was that coming Saturday. It was on Thursday afternoon, I think, Thursday afternoon. And uh, I was a star football player. My brother George had been hurt that year. He's a year older than me, so he didn't play that year. But uh, I was looking forward to the football banquet, blah, blah, blah. And at one o'clock in the afternoon, the nun came in, Sister Mary Regis, I always remember her name, one of those timeline things that you never forget. She was uh, crying, we didn't know what was up with that. And then she told us that the president had been shot there in Dallas. They let school out early and uh, everybody was kind of in a, in a fog. And it turned out that uh, one of the uh, children in my class, her name was Mary Driscoll. Her father was on PT-109 with Jack Kennedy when I went down to the Pacific. And he was standing about 10 feet away from Jack Kennedy that fateful afternoon in Dallas and Dealey Plaza when the shots went off. My uh, high, junior high school uh, football coach was named Bob Barrett. He was an FBI agent. And another child on the team, his name was Hostie. His dad's name was Jim Hostie. Uh, his dad was another FBI agent, and they were part of the watch team that was supposed to be uh, keeping eyes on Lee Harvey Oswald and probably hundreds of other, you know, subversive people there in Dallas. My junior high football coach, Bob Barrett, uh, apprehended he, Lee Harvey Oswald in the Texas Theater in Oak Cliff. Oswald puts the gun in his stomach, pulls the trigger, and misfired, and uh, Bob Barrett got the gun away from Lee Harvey Oswald and apprehended him, and when the... Uh, ambulance showed up at Parkland Hospital. Uh, a friend of mine later in Houston was having lunch upstairs in the um, employee cafeteria. Back then they didn't have cell phones, pages, and those type of things. And he heard a page, uh, head of surgery must immediately come to the emergency room. And he said, you know, there must be something big because that never happens. So he went down to the emergency room. He was in the final year as an intern uh, for, for his MD. And as he turned the corner on the emergency room, he saw Jackie Kennedy with blood all over her dress. And they took him into where the president was. He said, I'm sorry, he's dead. And they took him in where John Kennedy was and uh, James R. Red Duke, the famous Red Duke of Herman Hospital and Life Flight and so many innovations here in Houston. James R. Red Duke nursed John Connolly back to life for three days because back then they didn't have ICU units. So he lived with John Connolly. And that was kind of history in, in my life. And it, taught me that uh, bad things are gonna happen, you gotta live through them, and certainly the entire country was affected for uh, weeks, months, and years after the assassination of President Kennedy, but that was uh, one of the, uh, I would say, defining events of my childhood. It taught me that, you know, you gotta persevere through bad things. Then I went on to uh, high school, had a great education, a Dominican education at Bishop Lynch High School, which is a private high school in Dallas that my father founded uh, with some other men back in 1963 is now uh, one of the largest private high schools in Texas, still going strong, a legacy to my father and some other uh, great people's vision. Again, the essence of living is giving. My mother was a stay-at-home mom. All she cared about was us kids, and my parents were the most wonderful people in the world. They would never in a thousand years have thought of, about going on a vacation without us children because their world centered around the children, uh, the community, their faith, the church, and doing things for others. And that certainly was a defining uh, part of my life was the wonderful example I got from my two parents who didn't care about money. They cared about their children. They cared about the other kids. They cared about the church. They cared about the community and that they, they were truly givers in their entire life. All they were concerned about was their children, their grandchildren, their great grandchildren. So an, an incredible memory how lucky I was to have two great role models like that. Moving forward, I went to uh, Played football at the University of Texas. I played football at the University of Texas in 1969 and 1970 uh, when the Longhorns won 30 straight games, two consecutive national championships. I only had two small problems. I was uh, too small, too slow in the position. I played was called the bench, but I was on the team and I learned quite a bit at the University of Texas. There was a athletic trainer there named Frank Medina. He was quite the character, very old school, very hard line, but he taught me to ask, take, and give no quarter. And he would always come up and say, what are you saving it for, son? He kind of taught me in life that you're supposed to give your best effort every single day, and certainly Frank did that. And looking back uh, almost, uh, what is it, 50 years now, 
I still remember Frank. I can see him like yesterday, and he had a profound influence on my life. After that, many odd jobs and a couple failures in business. Then I started. Uh, I met my wife Linda in 1979-1980. We got married in 1981. Came to Houston and started Gallery Furniture with $5,000 in a dream. <laughs>